Hi there, and welcome to our tutorial on planned pooling. In this video, we're specifically going to talk about techniques for the Koi Pool Shawl by Nim Teasdale. I'll leave links down in the description box below. So in this pattern, you'll notice that the edges blend really nicely together and fade towards the edges. And then you have a contrasting motif formed by slip stitches in the center. In this video, we're going to talk about how to achieve that blending along the edges. So first thing is you're going to need a colorway that transitions from one color to another color at the opposite end. In this project, we used the birds of a feather colorway. And you can see the opposite ends here are what create the contrasting motif in the center. And then you'll have another colorway either a semi-solid or something that corresponds with the color that you want at the edge of your shawl. So you're going to be alternating rows with these two colors to form the, uh, to knit the shawl with. And you wanna make sure that those colors blend pretty nicely. We used once upon a time as the semi-solid colorway to make this blending effect here on the edge of the shawl. So, as I mentioned, you want to skein where the opposite ends kind of transition from one color to another color. And you want those opposite ends to have a nice contrast to them in order for the slip stitch motif to show up in the center of the shawl. In order to achieve the blending effect, you need to make sure you have a number of stitches that will accommodate the colors lining up together. So what we're going to do is cast on and find those number of stitches. You want to first start by finding the color that you want at the end of the shawl, which for us was this blue color here. And then you want to continue just casting on some stitches until you get to that same colorway that you want at the other end of the shawl, which is here, our blue. So we're going to cast on stitches until we get to the second blue section. All right. First, to determine where you start your row, you need to find the middle of that blue section because half of it is going to be at the end of one row and half of it will be, you know, as you knit into the next row. So I just lined them up there to find the center point of that blue section. And then that's where I'm going to begin casting on. I personally don't like to use a knot when I start my knitting projects. So what I do is I just make that little loop there and then I twist it on my stitch and uh, on my needle and that's how I form my first stitch. I find this is a much cleaner way of starting projects and doesn't leave a little bump there. So then I'm going to loop it around my finger and slip it onto the needle from the back. This is called the backwards loop cast on. It's super easy and quick to just cast on some stitches. It's not necessarily the most stable cast on, so I don't recommend it for every type of project, but if you just need to quickly cast on some stitches, it makes a fairly loose, smooth edge, and it's really quick. So we're just going to continue doing this until we get to the other blue section. All right, and there we are. Now we've got um, our almost an entire color repeat cast on here. We're just gonna cast on a few more stitches to make sure that we get to the middle of this blue section right here. I wanted to make sure that I didn't accidentally go a little too far. You can totally skip this part, but what I did just to make sure I didn't overdo it was make a tiny little loose knot right here in the middle of my blue section. So that way uh, it would stop me from continuing to cast on too many stitches. Again, this little knot is probably not necessary. As you'll see, we have some, I have some tips for you to avoid, um, you know, casting on too many or too few stitches, but we'll use this anyway as, as a guide to get started. So now I'm close to the knot. I'm just going to stop and undo my little knot here, and then I will cast on a few more stitches to get me to that center spot where I had the knot. So just gently unpick your knot and smooth it out and then continue casting on until you get to that spot where the knot was. 
So for me that meant just casting on a few more stitches to make sure I get to the center of my blue section. Alright, then you're going to turn your work now and smooth everything out. Make sure all your stitches are pointing in the way that they're supposed to be and nothing's twisted around. And you can see that we have gone through a full color repeat where we start at the blue, we have a nice transition through all of the colors, and we're ending our row with the blue color again. And this is how ideally we want all of our rows to begin and end when we're knitting with the transitional colorway here. So you just turn and do a little bit of speed knitting, zoom along to the end of your row. All right, now we've reached the end of our row, and look, I have a little bit of a dilemma here. I'm at the end of the row, but I'm still in the yellow color. I have not gotten to the middle of the blue where I'm supposed to be ending my row. So now, for now, I don't do this in the regular project, but just for now, because we're trying to determine the correct number of stitches to have, I'm just going to go ahead and cast on some extra stitches. So, handy backwards loop cast on again. We're going to cast on until we get to the middle of that blue section and um, this will help us ensure that we have the correct number of stitches to get us all the way through the full color repeat in our project. Okay so now that I've cast on to the middle of the blue section maybe I have an extra stitch actually let me just drop that off there. Now we're going to turn our work and knit another row. Cue the speed knitting and zoom along to the end of your row. Now in this case we had too few stitches and we, need, we found we needed to add some more. But what you might find also is that maybe you have too many stitches. So now I'm getting here towards, I'm, I'm in the blue section and you see I'm about in the middle of my blue section. But there are still several stitches left on the end of my row here. Um, I don't need to knit those stitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little marker here to signify my future self to not knit those last stitches at the end. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn the work right here and just start knitting again in the opposite direction. So this way the blue colorways will line up. And as you are knitting this swatch and as you're knitting through the project you every once in a while just want to check and make sure that your colors are matching. See here how the new stitch and the old stitch match up nicely there? We want to keep an eye out for that. They're not always going to match up perfectly as you have seen in the project. You know the the colors fade at the end not in a sharp line but you want to you just kind of keep an eye on that and make sure that at least they're fairly close to lining up. See here in the middle, you can see that they are the colors are still matching up. The new color or the new stitch and the old stitch are still matching up very nicely. Um, while working this project, I found that sometimes I would tighten up my grip on the yarn a little bit, or maybe loosen it up a little bit as well, in order to help those stitches match a little bit better. And that's totally okay. Once you've blocked your project, you won't even be able to see that you switched your gauge at all. So now we've gone ahead and knit a few extra rows just to verify that my colors will now continue to line up with each other. And you can see here that they do through this entire little mini swatch. All of the colors do line up fairly well and are fading to the blue at both ends now. Those little extra stitches that we had, you can, if you're feeling daring, you can just leave those behind. You don't need to put a marker and leave them on there. You can just drop them and let them dangle, let them hang out. This is just a swatch for mathematical purposes. We don't really need those stitches, so you can just let them be there. All right, so now we have determined this is the amount of stitches that we will need in order to get this nice transition as we work through the row of our project. Okay, You want to make sure that you're using a yarn and a needle that gives you a gauge that you like as well and then you'll determine the number of stitches. We want to make sure the motif is going to line up right here in the center of our row 
and that each of the edges are going to fade nicely. If you were to fold your row in half like this, that center part is where you want the center of your motif to be. So now we're going to go over a little bit of the mathematics in order to do make sure that lines up. So to align the motif in the center of your project, first you want to count your total number of stitches that you have here on our little swatch. Subtract the stitches needed for the motif, which is given in the pattern, and then you'll divide the resulting number by two. This number is the number of stitches that are needed at each end before and after the motif. So when you start knitting, you'll knit this number of stitches, place a marker, knit your motif stitches, place a marker, and then knit the same number of stitches for the ends. Now let's talk about some suggested color pairings. This is the colors that we used in our shawl. This is our Birds of the Feather colorway and our Once Upon a Time colorway. And you can see here that the blues match together very nicely and that is what we used to fade together on the ends. With this same Birds of a Feather colorway, we could also pair it with our Rhinebeck colorway here. And you can see this way the reds would blend together and then that's what we would use for the edges of the shawl and the blue would be the contrasting color for the motif. All right, the next colorway pairing suggestion we have for you is our Nashville colorway. And we paired that with our new colorway called Enigma. So you can see where that dark color right there would blend pretty nicely together. That would be the color along the sides or edges of your shawl. And then this nice red orange color right here would be the pop contrast color in the center of the motif. Next we have our Candombe colorway and one of the colorways that we've paired that with is our Grindelo colorway which would blend together fairly well with the blues on the end. Now Grindelo is a bit of more variegated colorway so it might not be as smooth of a colorway but the blues would fade and that peach color would be the contrast for the motif. Or you could have that peach color as the edge color blending together with our flamenco colorway and then this nice deep blue would be the contrast for the motif. Our next colorway pairing uses our Gold Rush colorway, which is not um, as accurately portrayed here. That is a nice golden, more of a yellow in the center. But we paired this with our Muir Woods colorway, so you'd get that nice woodsy brown blending together on the ends. Oh, that's a good representation of the gold color there. That gold color there would be the contrasting for the motif in the center of the shawl. Mm, nice, lovely, earthy colors. I like that combo. All right, next we have the Fortune Teller colorway, and we've paired this with our cauldron. Even the colorways make a nice pairing, right? Or using your cauldron colorway for to do some fortune telling. And the here on the ends, the grays would blend together, and that nice green color would be the pop for the contrast in the motif. That cauldron color is a little bit darker than it's coming up in the video. All right, next pairing we have our Oslo colorway, just looking like the beautiful leaves in the fall in Oslo, Norway. We paired that together with our Denali colorway. So you get that nice deep fall red color blending along the edges, and this nice bright yellowy orange color would be the pop for the motif in the center. Or you could have that bright orange nice colorway fading on the ends if you paired it with our As You Wish colorway. And those would fade together on the edges of your shawl and that nice deep red would be in the center motif, your contrasting color there. And two more suggested pairings for you using our gypsy colorway here. And we first pair this with our princess bride colorway. So you get that nice deep orange colorway would fade together along the edges of your shawl and you'd have this green for the contrast in the motif in the center. Or alternatively, you could choose to have that green as the edges if you paired it with our bubbly toes colorway here. And that nice greenish yellow would be the color fading together on the edges of your shawl. 
and then the deep red orange would be the contrast for the motif in the center. All right, we hope you've enjoyed these colorway pairings and have found some inspiration for your future projects here. And we hope that you've liked this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do decide to make this or any other planned pooling project, please share your project with us. You can leave a comment down below or tag us at Linares Yarn Co. on Instagram. And of course, don't forget to hit the little like button, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and share with your friends. Thanks so much again. Have a wonderful time knitting. Take care. Bye-bye.